On Talk TV, a correspondent, Kinsey G, whoever she is, is stressing me out. She says the king is thinking long term and might want to leave this property where he spent so much time with the queen mother to Queen Camilla in case the worst happens. The plan is to put it in her name so that even when William ascends to the throne, she still has the place for herself. Of course, Camilla will want to protect herself, and honestly, this makes sense to me. One thing about Camilla, though she's already strained the relationship between King Charles and his son, and now she's about to damage the relationship between Charles and his brother Andrew. The woman is always in the way, but whatever she wants, she gets. I don't understand why. But that's what happens when King Charles is obsessed with someone who looks like a miserable old prawn. Meanwhile, Prince Harry is refusing to do any fresh interviews regarding the launch of the paperback version of his memoir, Spare, which was originally released in January 2023. There are no additional chapters in this new edition. A friend of the Duke of Sussex told the Daily Mail that Harry doesn't plan to do any interviews to promote the book at all. The reason the paperback took longer to release is that the more expensive hardback was still selling well. I'm a bit confused about who this friend of Harry is, going to the Daily Mail, the same paper that's been trashing him left, right, and center. That's strange to me, but what I do know is that the paperback edition's release timing is impeccable. It's coming out in October, the same month that Camilla and Charles are scheduled for their trip to Samoa. Once again, it will completely overshadow their trip and dominate the media narrative. It's a full-blown PR attack, and Harry is going to win. Whenever Camilla and Charles travel together, it's always a PR disaster. With Harry's paperback coming out at the same time, the UK press will be focused on that. It's going to be great to watch. King Charles is also facing a fresh, blow get this, guys. He's reportedly upset after receiving news that the Caribbean nation of Trinidad and Tobago is taking steps to remove the late Queen Elizabeth from their official documents. The country plans to redesign its coat of arms, potentially removing the late queen, who is seen as a symbol of colonialism. Officials have already said they want to remove depictions of the three ships used by Christopher Columbus, which many islanders believe represent the beginning of centuries of European colonial rule and enslavement in the region, first by Spain and later by the UK. At a meeting on Wednesday, people of African, European, and indigenous descent shared their thoughts. Eric Lewis, a member of the First Peoples, asked, what is the queen doing on top of the coat of arms? Let's put her to rest. The queen is depicted on the nation's coat of arms above the shield, represented by a golden helmet facing the front, symbolizing Queen Elizabeth as the colonial ruler at the time of its design. Trinidad and Tobago were first colonized by the Spanish, who ruled for 300 years before ceding it to the British, who governed for more than 160 years until the island's independence in 1962. There's also a statue of Columbus dominating a square in the capital, Port of Spain. I don't understand why it's still there, and I feel like everything needs to be redesigned. Queen Elizabeth's face needs to be removed immediately from anything involving the redesign. There's no need for these symbols of colonialism to remain. This is, of course, a fresh blow for King Charles, especially since it's been amplified by the recent trips of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle to Colombia and Nigeria, which have inspired these changes, according to the article.